Executive Mayor Jeff Makubo joins us now uh, to unpack this uh, further. Uh, Mr. Makubo, thanks for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Sakina, and thank you to, to the viewers. Thanks for having me. As Criselda says, elections just over the hill, and uh, you delivered uh, the State of the City address, uh, and this, of course, the final one in your final lap in this uh, particular term of office. Uh, how would you rate your performance? Uh, let's do a bit of self-assessment. How do you rate your performance in terms of, let's say, service delivery as uh, a yardstick? I think uh, from the 4th of December 2019, uh, when we assumed office, um, to date, to date uh, with the disruption, a serious disruption of COVID-19, wherein this, the, the country, the province, the city went into serious lockdown, uh, we had to change our focus to, uh, you know, trying to contain the virus, to respond to the virus. Um, we, we did well during the pandemic. I think we we, we launched pro programs like Hashtag Club Amazon, um, provided water and on all other necessities to informal settlements. Um, you know, we suspended credit control because to, to give back to communities who were in, in, in strain, we distributed food. Uh, we, of course, uh, you know, some, some, some agencies like the JRA were not, uh, were, not, were, not, were not essential services. It led to a backlog of rate maintenance and all that, but now we are working right in earnest Ward by ward, street by street, block by block, uh, to to catch up on the road maintenance, to catch up on the stormwater, to catch up on the open space management. So, if you if you ask me how I think we've done under the circumstances, I think we've done very very well. Mm. Let's peel it back. So, you talk about COVID nineteen and the impact that it's had on uh, service delivery. Exactly, how did it impact your services? It, it, it impacted our services uh, uh, enormously, greatly. Uh, up to now, uh, workers coming to work, they rotate. They can't. They don't come all at once. So some come uh, for three days this week, three days next week, others two, uh, because you know uh, of trying to contain the virus and avoid uh, uh, you know people being concentrated in one area for long for for long periods. Um, it, it, we 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 are, however, catching up on the backlogs that came about as a result of COVID nineteen. Mm. So you mentioned JRA, that's the Joburg Roads Agency, for those who don't know. Um, and you say that they are now doing a part of this catch-up work that you talk about in uh, repairing, among other things, potholes, one would imagine. Um, but you recently also uh, launched a partnership with the private sector uh, to repair these infamous, now infamous, potholes in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, but is this not an indication of a failure uh, when it comes to basic services on your part and now relying, as some would say, on insurance companies to fix these bottles? Actually, I think it's, uh, it's something that uh, a city, even through our own strategy, has tried to promote all the time. The issue of partnerships uh, between ourselves and business, partnerships between ourselves as a government with the civil society, partnerships between us and the faith-based organizations, and partnerships between the government and communities uh, is something that is welcome. I mean, we, it's not the first time that uh, we've partnered with the private sector to deliver services. We have before uh, partnered with, uh, let's say, gift of the givers to respond to emergencies. Um, we've partnered with uh, our insurance to, to deal with uh, the traffic congestion and, and points, points, uh, pointsman's duty. So, so when we started in NS to, to roll out the program of... Uh, accelerated service delivery to fix potholes, to cut grass, to maintain open spaces, to maintain streams, to restore biodiversity, uh, things that uh, our communities have been declaring about. The private sectors called us and said, look, we want to partner with you, we want to lend a hand, we want to improve mobility, we want to, to contribute as, co as responsible corporate citizens to make Johannesburg um, a world-class African city that we seek to be. So I don't think it's part of failure, but it's part of working together with our communities, with corporates, with churches, with NGOs to make Johannesburg a much better place. Mm. And, and uh, which is absolutely fabulous, as you say, uh, any good that can come out of that uh, to make and alleviate the plight of the residents of Johannesburg is welcome. However, how does this impact on your budget? Uh, do you budget to actually fix these potholes, to cut the grass, do everything else that the private sector then comes in to do? Uh, how, how does that reflect on your budgetary issues? 
It complements. Um, remember that, uh, you know, because of uh, the, the needs of the city, the demands of services, uh, the limitation of resources, uh, um, you know, with economics saying you allocate scarce resources in the eyes of insatiable ones, um, you can't do everything at the same time. You can't satisfy every need at the same time. Now, any help coming from any quarter, including the private sector, complements the budget that we have, especially on specific front-facing visible service delivery issues that our communities need. So we do welcome uh, that partnership as we, do, we don't reduce our budget. We actually keep the budget the same uh, on particular issue and then we just complement. So, so the private sector will go to areas and we'll go to other areas working together. Um, um, instead of de de dealing with them in a, in a sequential manner, we can deal with the problems at the same time and simultaneously, thereby improving the daily lived experience of our job citizens. So, uh, not to belabor it, but I'm trying to understand, how do you budget for that? Do you budget for fixing part of the potholes in the city, uh, hoping that the private sector would come in and complement that? Or do you budget for fixing all of the potholes across the city? We, we budget for, for maintaining of roads. Uh, it might be fixing the pothole, patching it, resurfacing it, depending on the on what they call the, the vision conditioning index, the VCI, that tells us the state of road, whether the state is, the road is in a good condition, uh, average condition, or poor condition, or very poor condition. So our budgeting for road maintenance and road upgrading and road resurfacing, it, it depends on, on the, kind, uh, the, the type of road. So, so whatever the resources that you allocate to JRA, they allocate according to the state of roads to say in this financial year we'll fix we'll have Nicole, we'll fix a, a CR Swart, we'll fix a Chris Hani Paraguanath, we'll keep. So, so they know which roads to fix uh, in what particular time and what particular depending on the availability of resources. Um, and then from there then we, we and then the maintenance budget will then deal with controls as they recur, mm -hmm. as they will care. And then of course when the private sector comes, it means that we can free some money to do it's part of the upgrades of the roads, especially if they're concentrating on fixing the potholes themselves. As I say, it complements our services, it adds to what we do, and it, it improves the work that we do. And, and just moving on, because I think we'll have opportunity, seeing that we're going into local government elections, uh, to actually drill down deeper into some of these questions. But uh, moving on to the question of land grabs, uh, that has become quite a contentious matter in the city of Johannesburg. And along with it, um, one of the other uh, points highlighted in your State of the City address was, of course, uh, that of um, housing and uh, opportunity centers uh, as well. So let's talk to that. How big a problem are land grabs in the city of Johannesburg at the moment? I think part of the unfortunate legacies of the 2016-2019 uh, uh, administration was uh, turning a blind eye on what is obviously and uh, overtly an illegal and uh, uh, activity of uh, land grabs, land invasions, unlawful occupation of land. And he, you know, we did that um, as a city to please our political political uh, supporters and to be kept in power. That was very unfortunate because it brought with it a copycat culture of uh, serious land uh, invasions throughout the city, from the south to the north, including setting up of structures in you know parks in the in suburbia, uh, under the bridges. So, so the just general lawlessness that we have to reverse. We, we, we want to contain uh, the land invasions, we want to reverse uh, the land invasions um, and we want to eradicate this uh, scourge of illegal land use, of uncontrolled city growth. Because the, you invade land today, in your years time you will need services, uh, you will close the roads uh, because it's, it's unplanned growth, unplanned, unplanned uh, 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 the building of, uh, of human settlements. However, we do, ap we do appreciate the fact that there's a backlog of housing 10,000 people coming to Johannesburg every month require um, the use, require human settlements, require jobs and all that. And the, the demand for our strip supply, which is why in the state of the city yesterday, we articulated um, alternatives of land release, uh, service stands, affordable rentals, uh, social housing as a solution towards uh, 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 alleviating the housing backlog. But we do appreciate the fact that the housing need is huge. Mm. Um, in, in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, but, but you would also agree that, uh, contrary to your assertion, 
the question of land grabs in Johannesburg actually predates the 2016 administration? No, we are, we are thoroughly contained uh, the, the informality, the growth of informality. Um, you know, we had drawn the line. At, that, at some point, we had about 211 informal settlements dating back from 1989, some of them. And we had starting to formalize. We had started the institute upgrading, uh, meaning that you're building while people live there. So it's a brownfield, it's not a greenfield operation. Um, and and, and that, by the time we went to 2016, uh, we had done about 50 of them, formalized them, started electrifying them, provision of services, uh, making sure that they've got addresses. Um, and the 160, there was a plan throughout the five years to say, now we're going to reverse and then formalize all the ones that are outstanding from Naren's farm electrification uh, to, to the south. Now, what, what then happened, I think 50 or 60 more emerged and land grabs are still going on. And it is unrelenting, uh, Sakina. You remove them today, tomorrow they are back there. You, 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 you demolish, tomorrow they are there. And why? Because syndicates are preying on the poor. Syndicates are taking land, selling to the, the needy. And we find in these informalities uh, that majority of those are foreign nationals who seek uh, shelter and they buy these shacks from these shack lots, from these illegal, uh, uh, pe illegal land sellers, uh, people who are selling land illegally that does not belong to them. So some, some of it is not really uh, uh, people on the housing waiting list. In fact, most of them is people who are just scraping land from, from Mozambique. They are buying from Mozambique, from Lesotho and all that. Law enforcement agencies are up to it working together with them, together with province and national government. Ms. Makubo, uh, thanks so much for uh, unpacking some of the issues. There are, of course, many others. Uh, the uh, question of the inner city decay. Uh, there are uh, long-standing issues uh, with, uh, for example, the billing system and also helping uh, residents alleviate some of the difficulty they have in servicing uh, their municipal accounts in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, questions I'm not too perturbed we didn't get to because we are in election season, mm. good and proper, mm. leading up to the local government election. So I'm sure there will be opportunity to canvas all of these questions. I think so indeed.